Yes, Hecht released something other than collections of Go and Shogi games. Although, this is the only action game that they published on the Famicom. The other action game that they developed was published by Jalico. Moon Crystal proves to be a strange experiment. There's a lot of creativity behind it, but I'm not sure it entirely works. Of course, as a Hecht game, the print run for Moon Crystal was incredibly low. And as a result, this one fits comfortably into the top 5 most expensive Famicom games. Forget the 10,000 yen club, you can put this one in the 40,000 yen club. It was one of the very last games that I had to acquire for my collection, and that was entirely because copies never go up for sale. The plot of the game is that you're Ricky, a young boy who lives in a village tasked with protecting the moon crystal. One night, a bunch of people show up to steal the crystal, and they kill off most of your family. Ricky sets off to pursue them. Moon Crystal is a side-scrolling action game where A jumps and B swings your knife. And one of the first things you're going to notice is that Moon Crystal attempts to make the action more cinematic. It's trying to be Prince of Persia, only without the rotoscoping. And Ricky's the only character who moves that way. So you don't just flip around when you press in the other direction. It takes him a moment to turn around. You can also catch on ledges if your jump is placed exactly right. It's usually easier to do from below if you're jumping straight up. And then once you have a firm grip, you can hit up to scramble up to them. It takes a little bit to get a feel for the ledge grab maneuver, but it's absolutely vital for the game. Moon Crystal has seven stages, and between the stages there are some very lengthy cutscenes. I don't think the story is going to blow you away, but the presentation is really impressive for a Famicom game. As you're exploring the levels, you'll come across treasure chests, and you have to attack these to open them. The chests contain lots of useful items, but you lose any power-ups that you've collected when you die. The sword increases your attack's range, and even gives it a bigger arc when you attack while in the air. Most enemies only take a single hit to defeat, so the sword doesn't increase your attack power, but it's still very useful. The empty heart increases your life meter by one, you start with three and can have a maximum of five. Naturally, the hearts restore your health. Your picture acts as a one-up, and these chests tend to be really out of the way and difficult to get. You start with three lives, but there's infinite continues. Continuing just puts you back at the start of the stage. The diamond will make you invincible for a short period. It's handy, but it doesn't last very long, and it never seemed to be placed somewhere where it's really useful. The most challenging power-up to use are the wing boots. With them, you get a double jump. Now that might sound great, but there's a few caveats. First, you can only jump again while you're going up. Once you start coming back down, then you're stuck. Second, you didn't really have a whole lot of air control to begin with. Adding a second jump to that just makes it worse. On the other hand, if you can master the double jump, then you've got a lot more maneuverability, and you can go a lot farther. It's a required item at some parts in later stages. A useful trick to be aware of regarding your attack is that you can deflect some enemy bullets out of the air. Not all of them, and the timing is really tight to pull this off, but it's almost required as some enemies will fire just a ton of bullets at you. Of course, so will the enemies whose shots you can't deflect. The stiff movement in Moon Crystal makes a lot of the platforming in the game a real challenge. It's not bad, per se, it just doesn't behave the way that you'd expect it to. You can't really pull off a lot of fancy maneuvers here. It becomes a real problem on the third stage, where you have a series of buttons that you press, and then the doors shut after a certain amount of time. You're going to have those doors slam shut on you a few times. Even after that, there's a lot of places where the timing is really tight. Sometimes it's due to enemy placement, sometimes it's due to traps on the stage. But Moon Crystal often requires a degree of precision that isn't supported by how animations and controls are delayed. The game winds up being a lot harder than it should be as a result. The bosses in Moon Crystal can be pretty difficult too. Not this first boss, he's a wimp. But for the rest of them, you have to get in close and tight, and the delays in your actions make it hard to evade their attacks. You really have to master the game systems to make any progress in Moon Crystal. 
Though if you do get stuck, there is a cheat code. Hold down up on the second player controller and hit reset, and it will take you to a stage select. Moon Crystal is regarded as one of the Famicom's masterpieces in Japan, though that price tag seems to keep it out of many people's hands. The fans seem to really like it for its presentation, especially those lengthy cutscenes. My feeling about Moon Crystal is that it's a good effort that doesn't quite work. Half the time while I was playing I was thinking, oh this is really good, and the other half of the time I was going, oh this is really awful. There's some fun bits of level design, and there's a lot of sections of the game that are designed to just hurt you. Your stiff and slow movement could have been fine, but they made a lot of the game about fast reactions and precision. As it turned out, Moon Crystal was an interesting game that probably could have used a bit more polish on that crystal.